Hello, here is an alcohol fixed smear from an EUS FNA sample taken from a cystic lesion in the body of the pancreas. And as we move around at low power, we can see that there is some mucoid material in the background, as well as some tight cohesive clusters of cells. Coming on to slightly higher magnification, we can see some branching and cohesive sheets of glandular cells, and at the same time, some streaks of mucin in the background. There are also occasional single nuclei, as you can see here, and this area is a little bit more cellular. Here is another area showing these little small branching tissue fragments. Some of them almost have a suggestion of a papillary or micropapillary architecture. Here is a higher magnification view and we can see this rather complex looking tissue fragment. There is a hint of some acinar formations or gland openings in some areas and in other areas we get the idea that there may be a row of columnar cells with nuclear palisading at the edges. And here is another very complex appearing tissue fragment. There is a suggestion of a little papillar formation here with a fibrovascular core. And perhaps even a hint of micropapillary formations in this area. So let's take a step back and look at the approach to cystic pancreatic lesions. The first thing to note is the spectrum of diagnosis that we may encounter. So of course this includes neoplastic and non-neoplastic entities. Among the non-neoplastic ones, we would think of pseudocyst or lymphoepithelial cyst. Under the neoplastic umbrella, they can be benign. Uh, well, at least vast majority of serous cyst adenomas are benign. And we have other neoplasms, such as cystic neuroendocrine tumors, solid pseudopapillary neoplasms, which should have rather classical cytologic features. And a very important group, the neoplastic mucinous cysts. Most of the time, this comprises two entities, the mucinous cystic neoplasm and the intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm, or IPMN. So this group is particularly important to pick up on cytology because they are at least pre-malignant and they may sometimes even be associated with either high-grade dysplasia or outright invasive malignancy. So in terms of the practical approach, we always have a three-pronged approach, clinical information, fluid analysis, which is very useful in the context of pancreatic cystic lesions, and of course, a cytomorphologic evaluation. In terms of clinical information, the gender and the age are very important. For example, uh, in male patients, mucinous cystic neoplasm is very unlikely. They are far more common in women, as well as the solid pseudopapillary neoplasms. And other important clinical information would be the actual findings on the EUS FNA. Uh, if the cystic lesion is connected to the pancreatic duct, then this is a high chance that we may be dealing with an IPMN. In this particular instance of the case that I have just shown, uh, it was actually connected to the pancreatic duct. The needle route is also important because if the needle passes through the stomach, the gastric foveolar epithelium may also resemble low-grade mucinous neoplasms. So we have to be aware of this. And if there are any solid areas or thickening in the cyst wall, this may be a potential danger sign that we may be dealing with a more high-grade lesion. A gross finding of thick mucin is also very helpful. For example, if you have mucin that strings out, this is indicative that we are most likely dealing with a mucin-producing cystic neoplasm rather than just gastric contaminant mucin. So for fluid analysis, we can do CEA and a higher level would uh, be associated with a higher chance of a mucin-producing neoplasm. Whereas if it's very low, you might get this finding, for example, in a serous cyst adenoma. Uh, amylase is also useful to look at, but it's not always conclusive or specific. And the presence of KRAS mutation also indicates a very high likelihood of a mucin-producing neoplasm. In terms of cytology, we want to look for thick background colloid-like mucin, which is in contrast to thin gastric contaminant mucin. Uh, this again indicates a neoplastic mucin. 
And then, of course, we want to assess the degree of cytologic atypia, whether it is low grade or high grade, because this would impact the management of these lesions. Going back to the FNA that we were looking at, this is that complex tissue fragment. We can actually see here that there is some nuclear stratification. Uh, there is a columnar cell shape. There is tufting. Here we can see this little micropapillary uh, structures or this tufting. We have some actual papillary structures with fibrovascular cores. And um, if we look at the cytomorphology, it does not appear to be high grade. But when we focus up and down, there is mild variation in nuclear size. Some of the cells exhibit nucleoli, which are still quite small. And as we look around a bit, we can actually find some mitotic figures, as you can see here and also here. And there is some degree of disorganization of the nuclei, as you can see, but no high-grade cytologic atypia. We can see the mitotic figure uh, more clearly here. So mitoses are actually quite easy to identify. Therefore, this cystic lesion in the pancreas is likely to be a mucin-producing cystic neoplasm. And because of the presence of a connection to the main pancreatic duct, this is most likely to be an IPMN. And looking at the cytomorphology, there are no definite high-grade features here. So the diagnosis can be given as IPMN with low-grade cytologic atypia, no definite areas of high-grade atypia. This is helpful to clinicians in their planning of management in terms of whether resection is indicated.